We want to thank you very much. Uh, this is a great honor to be with you. Uh, okay, do you have any questions? On yeah. Roger Stone, Can I sir. On Roger Stone, yeah. isn't your tweet political interference? No, not at all. He was treated very badly. Nine years recommended by four people that perhaps they were Mueller people. I don't know who they were, prosecutors. And they uh, I don't know what happened. They all hit the road pretty quickly. Look, you had somebody just recently, you saw what happened. Uh, he got two months. He got sentenced to two months for leaking classified information at the highest level. Who's that? The they treated Roger Stone very badly. They treated everybody very badly. And if you look at the Mueller investigation, it was a scam because it was illegally set up. It was set up based on false documentation and false documents. You look at what happened, how many people were hurt, their lives were destroyed, and nothing happened with all the people that did it and launched a scam. Where's Comey? Why, where is Comey? What's happening to McCabe? What's happening to Lisa and uh, Peter Strzok and Lisa Page? What's happening with them? It was a whole setup. It was a disgrace for our country, and everyone knows it, too. Everyone, including NBC, which gives a lot of fake news. The fact is that Roger Stone was treated horribly, and so were many other people. Their lives were destroyed. And it turns out, you look at the FISA warrants and what just happened with FISA, where they found out it was fixed, that it was a dirty, rotten deal. So when you look at that and you see what happened to Roger Stone, but think of it, a man leaks classified information, highly classified. They give him two months. Roger Stone for doing, nobody even knows what he did. In fact, they said he intimidated somebody. That person said he had no idea he was going to jail for that. That person didn't want to press charges. They put him in for nine years. It's a disgrace. And frankly, they ought to apologize to a lot of the people whose lives they've ruined. All right, next question. Next question, please. Go ahead. Yeah, please, Steve. Pardon? Wait, wait, wait. What? Are you considering a pardon? For I don't want to say that yet, but I tell you what, people were hurt viciously and badly by these corrupt people. And I want to thank, if you look at what happened, I want to thank the Justice Department for seeing this, this horrible thing. And I didn't speak to him, by the way, just so you understand. They saw the horribleness of a nine-year sentence for doing nothing. You have murderers and drug addicts. They don't get nine years. Nine years for doing something that nobody even can define what he did. Somebody said he put out a tweet. And the tweet, you based it on that. We have killers. We have murderers all over the place. Nothing happens. And then they put a man in jail and destroy his life, his family, his wife, his children. Nine years in jail, it's a disgrace. In the meantime, Comey walks around making book deals, the people that launched the scam investigation, and what they did is a disgrace. And hopefully it'll be treated fairly. Everything else will be treated fairly. Are you speaking to the Attorney General? Go ahead, please. Yes. Are you speaking to the Attorney General? Go ahead, please. Yes. Are you speaking to the Attorney General? 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 Yes. Excelente. Lo felicito, señor presidente. Mr. President, Pero los indicadores macroeconómicos de Latinoamérica, las expectativas de crecimiento están bajando. Y particularmente, el crecimiento de Ecuador está en cero. ¿Cómo ayudamos a las economías latinoamericanas? ¿Cómo ayudamos a Ecuador, señor presidente? ¿Cómo ayudamos a Ecuador, señor presidente? Gracias. Gracias. Me encanta esa pregunta. Me gustaría que tuviéramos algunas personas como esta aquí. He's congratulating us on our great success as a country, and I want to congratulate you, too, because uh, what you've done in Ecuador and your president have done a fantastic job. Thank you very much. You're con Mr. President, you're concerned about the four prosecutors? I'm not concerned about anything. I'm concerned about Does it show that there's something wrong with you? I'm not concerned about anything. They ought to go back to school and learn, because I'll tell you, with the way they treated people, nobody should be treated like that. Go ahead. And when was it? When was it? Seventeen years ago, you tweeted George W. Bush in 2003. What changed now? What is your specific interest with Ecuador now? And you said that Spanish Congress of Ecuador is the first time that it's been officially published in 17 years. Since 2003, it's changed a lot. Thank you. She did a good job. Go ahead. I think I understood it. Excellent. Encantado, señorita. Sí. Ecuador, después de una época bastante difícil en sus relaciones internacionales, ha decidido renovar 
ha servido a refrescar su relación internacional y acercarse bastante más a quienes han sido eh, permanentemente más afectos a nuestra forma de pensar y a nuestra forma de ser. No sé si lo estamos diciendo inmediatamente. Sí, sí mejor. Uh, Ecuador, has, after having gone through very hard times, and uh, in, especially in, where, uh, in regards to its international relationships, has decided to come together again with the international community and bring refreshed relationships uh, to those who are uh, who have the same way of thinking as we do. We wanted to come closer to them. Recordemos que Estados Unidos es el principal socio comercial de Ecuador por una parte y por otra parte también vuelvo a recalcar eh, coincidimos en valores que no son bastante comunes como son la libertad, la democracia, la justicia, la solidaridad, la fraternidad y el respeto a los derechos. The USA, we need to remember that the USA is the main trade partner for Ecuador. And this is not only in terms of trade, but because we share many common values, such as the love for liberty, democracy, justice, justice, solidarity, fraternity, and the respect of human rights. And I can tell you the thing that's changed from our standpoint, we're the number one uh, economy in the world by far. We've never done better. We have the strongest markets we've ever had. The market is up very substantially today, 250 points when I last looked. And our country has never done better militarily. We've rebuilt our military. We've cut our taxes. We've cut regulations at a level that nobody's ever been able to cut them. And our country is doing great. And we've really reestablished a lot of relationships, but we have certainly reestablished it with Ecuador. Ecuador had a very unusual outlook on life, but with your great president, he realizes how important it is to get along with the United States. And I want to uh, just congratulate him because our relationship is very good. He's made tremendous progress. <laughs> Sir. Yeah, sure. We will, and uh, they have incredible product, and uh, they grow it, and they make it, and we like it. So we, we will. Sure. And they need our product, too. Is it going to be like the USMCA? That's your model for that? Well, that's a great model. We just finished that, and it's a great model with Mexico and with Canada. Uh, USMCA has been very successful. Already, the fruits are really taking place. You, you take a look at what's happening in terms of the kind of numbers we'll be doing with the USMCA. And this, on a much smaller scale, would be interesting. We are looking at that kind of a model, yes. And so, Venezuela, are you going to talk about that? And are you worried uh, about the assault on Juan Guaido yesterday when he arrived? Yeah, we'll be looking at uh, and talking about Venezuela. And it's always close to our heart. We have millions of people from Venezuela living in the United States very successfully. They love our country and they love Venezuela. We'll take care of the Venezuelan people. Sir, some Republicans said they hope you learned a lesson from impeachment. I, you weren't you weren't chosen, Steve. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, thank you. Oh, excuse me. One second. We'll do this gentleman and you. Go ahead, Steve. The Philippines decided to sever a U.S. military pact with the United States. What was your reaction to that, sir? Is there anything to, to convince him otherwise? Well, I, I never minded that very much, to be honest. We helped the Philippines very much. We helped them defeat ISIS. Uh, I get along. Actually, I have a very good relationship there, but I, I really don't mind if they would like to do that. That's fine. We'll save a lot of money. You know, my views are different than other people. I view it as, thank you very much, we save a lot of money. But if you look back, if you go back three years ago, when ISIS was overrunning the Philippines, we came in and literally single-handedly were able to save them from vicious attacks on their islands. Uh, but I haven't heard exactly that, what you, the way you expressed the question. And my relationship, as you know, is a very good one uh, with their leader. And uh, we'll see what happens. They'll have to tell me that. Yes, please go ahead. Thank you and good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon. Mi pregunta es, sabemos que vamos a tratar temas de seguridad aquí. Yo quisiera saber qué es lo que Ecuador pretende llevar desde Estados Unidos para abolir la seguridad más que nada en el narcotráfico. My question is about security. We know that Ecuador has a problem with narcotraffic and yeah. some other problems. So one of the topics you're going to talk about is security. I want to know what Ecuador wants to learn from the United States in that topic. Well, we're doing very well on our southern border. We're doing uh, incredibly well. We've built over 100 miles now. It's substantially more than that of wall. 
very powerful wall. Uh, it's got all sorts of uh, protections on it. We have alarm systems. We have lighting systems. We have everything you can have. It's pretty much the ultimate of what you can do in terms of that. We have great protection. We have great protection with our military. We've been dealing also with Mexico. Mexico has 27,000 soldiers on our uh, southern border. And they've been great. And we just set another record. As you saw, the numbers have come way down uh, in terms of people coming through our border, way down. They're going to be very low. And after the wall is complete, even in the areas where we're now over 100 miles, uh, incredibly, the traffic has virtually stopped. It's come to a halt. The wall has been a tremendous, uh, tremendous thing. So uh, we'll have that finished by the end of next year. And uh, sometime during next year, we'll have it finished. And uh, we'll probably be up to close by the end of this year, close to 400 miles of wall. And it's made a tremendous difference. So we have great security. We'll be discussing with Ecuador their situation and their security. They do have a problem with the narcos, and that's not good. And we will be working with them to help. Mr. President. One second. She's going to just answer the question. Correcto, sí. Sí, ahorita que usted conoce, pues eh, los Estados Unidos tiene la más desarrollada tecnología y ciencia del mundo y, por cierto, esta barca y decanta en muchas eh, de ese tipo de actividades. Entonces, a la seguridad, mucha experiencia en aquello que nosotros queremos aprovecharla. Además que la tecnología, eh, tal vez, eh, qué sé yo, naves, eh, capacitación, aeronaves, que nos puedan ayudar a controlar este flagelo, que es el cena el futuro de la humanidad, pero fundamentalmente de nuestros niños y nuestros jóvenes. Last night, uh, as you know, we had a very interesting election, and from the standpoint of the Republican Party and myself, but from the standpoint of the Republican Party, it was a tremendous success. I got more votes than any incumbent president in many decades. That includes a lot of presidents, and it was really incredible, the love in New Hampshire. And by the way, we did the same thing in Iowa, and we were actually able to quickly count our votes. We knew within minutes after the poll how many votes we had, unlike the Democrats. So uh, we had a tremendous success in Iowa, and last night we had a tremendous, uh, very, very powerful success in New Hampshire. So it was a great honor. But setting that record in both states was terrific, and now we're off to some areas that I like very much. Nevada, you look at that. South Carolina, you look at that. I think we're going to do very well there. Probably setting up a major rally in South Carolina. We already have one in Nevada. So we'll be uh, in those two locations, and we'll be at a few others also. But it's been incredible. The rally we had in New Hampshire and in Iowa, again, it was almost the same. It was They were both spectacular. Uh, you could have put them in a big stadium. We were already in large arenas, but you could have put them in a big stadium. We could have sold it out numerous times. So it was really, really terrific. Who's and the uh, we appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate it. Who's the Democratic frontrunner, sir? That's a good question. Uh, I would say Bernie looks like he's doing very well. Why is he serving? I think uh, people like his message. He's got energy. His people have energy. Uh, but they like his message. Uh, but a lot of people don't like that particular message. But there is a group that probably agrees with it. And, you know, whoever it is will take them on. But it would certainly seem that Bernie Sanders has the advantage right now. Will Pretty you debate big. whoever wins? Will you debate yeah, whoever wins? Sure. I look forward to it, actually. Lisa Murkowski, moments ago, Lisa Murkowski earlier said that you shouldn't have gotten involved with the Roger Stone case. She said it's just bad. Some Republicans have said they hoped you would learn a lesson from impeachment. What lesson did you learn from impeachment? Uh, that the Democrats are crooked, they've got a lot of crooked things going, that they're vicious, uh, that uh, they shouldn't have brought impeachment, Anything and that my yourself. poll numbers are 10 points higher because of fake news like NBC, which reports the news very inaccurately, probably more inaccurately than CNN, if that's possible, uh, MSDNC, and your MS, uh, and, and if you take a look at NBC, no, I think they're among the most dishonest reporters of the news. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.